Sharpening is one of the essential tasks of any raw editor, as raw files, unlike JPEGs, are inherently unprocessed and need to be sharpened to look its best. If you're a beginner, you might not know about DxO's powerful tools to make your raw images tack sharp. And that's what we're going to be talking about in today's video. By the way, stick around till the end as we're going to be doing a sharpening comparison of all DxO's tools so you can be the judge on the best way to sharpen your images. Before we go into the demonstration, let's have a quick overview of lens sharpness. In photography, sharpness refers to how crisp an image appears. In a photo with sufficient sharpness, you will be able to see even the smallest details of the subject. Each new generation of lens improves the sharpness of the previous one. As a general rule, a manufacturer's lenses of today are sharper than a decade ago. That being said, DxO says that even for the most well-engineered lenses, the laws of physics make it very difficult to achieve homogeneous sharpness across the frame. Now let's go on to the causes of lens softness. DxO says various factors contribute to lens softness. The first is the quality of the lens. DxO says softness is more pronounced in zooms rather than in primes because of its more complex design. The second cause is shooting with the widest aperture. Softness is particularly noticeable when using the lens's widest aperture where the corners of a photo will often be softer than the center. The third cause is shooting at a very small aperture. When the aperture is made very small, diffraction makes it impossible to obtain perfectly sharp images. And this diffraction affects the entire frame. So that is an overview of lens sharpness and factors that may affect it. Next, let's run through DxO's tools to improve sharpness. Let's start off with the Lens Softness Correction Tool. DxO says that the Lens Softness Correction Tool is one of its major strengths. It relies on DxO optics modules and EXIF metadata. DxO performs measurements on the softness characteristics for every point on the lens and stores this information in the DxO optics modules. Another characteristic of this tool is that it can only perform global corrections. Third, it only works in raw files. Fourth, this tool does not apply sharpening uniformly. For example, if the lens camera combination tends to produce softer corners and a sharper center, then the software will subject the corners to a stronger correction and the center to a weaker one to give an optimum result. DxO calls this an intelligent correction not only because it sharpens optimally, but also because it does not introduce artifacts typical in other sharpening processes. Next, let's demonstrate the lens softness correction with this raw image. First, let's zoom in to greater than 100% to better see the results clearly. As you can see, I've set the global slider to maximum in order to give the strongest effect. Next, I'll enable the tool. And there you go. As simple as that, the sharpening is done. As you can see, it performed a pretty significant improvement. Despite the tool being set to maximum, artifacts are kept to a minimum. Also, unlike when denoising, wherein you had to use the loop widget to preview the results, sharpening allows you to preview the results large, which is a better overall user experience. There may be times though that you might not see the result immediately due to lag or a slow computer. In those cases, I recommend to zoom in larger to make it easier for DxO to process the image or alternatively, just rely on the loop, which will give a preview faster. Next, let's see the results on the edges of the frame. As you can see, there is an even larger improvement in the sharpness on the edges. Those blurred areas really become clearer. Let's move on to the next tool, the Unsharp Mask. The Unsharp Mask increases the image contrast along the edges of an object in a photo. Unlike lens softness correction, 
This tool works with both RAW and JPEG. Unlike lens softness correction, the sharpening is applied uniformly throughout the image. Another advantage of the unsharp mask is it can be applied globally and locally. Drag the intensity slider to increase the amount of contrast in the pixels. This contrast enhancement creates the illusion of greater sharpness. Adjust the radius slider to determine the number of neighboring pixels that will affect the sharpening. The greater the radius, the more obvious the sharpening. Let's demonstrate the unsharp mask with this image. To understand the effect better, I'll use it without the help of lens softness correction. I'll increase the intensity. As you can see, that strengthens the effect. However, let's say I want the image to be even sharper than it is. With the unsharp mask, you can do just that. Simply increase the radius slider. As you can see, it is a much stronger result. Unfortunately though, there are ugly halos now appearing throughout the image, evidence that we have just over sharpened it. I'll dial back the radius for a more pleasing result. There, that looks better. While the unsharp mask works great, the recommendation from DxO is to do most of the sharpening with lens softness correction first and apply unsharp mask as a final touch. Let's do that now. I'll turn on lens softness correction. Since unsharp mask is already turned on, this produces an over sharpened result. No problem. I'll dial back the unsharp mask. There, the image is now nice and crisp. One benefit of the unsharp mask is its ability to be applied locally. Let's demonstrate this with this image. As you can see, increasing unsharp mask looks great on the rocks, but not so much on the water. No problem, I'll use a local adjustment to target just the rocks. I'll navigate to local adjustments. I'll use the auto masking tool. I'll increase the sharpness slider. Notice that unlike with the unsharp mask in the detail panel, in local adjustments, sharpness lacks a radius slider which limits the amount of sharpening you can apply locally. So that is one drawback of sharpening with local adjustments. So that was the unsharp mask. Before we go to a comparison of the sharpening results, let's run through a few recommendations. First, as mentioned, DxO recommends you do most of your sharpening with the DxO lens softness correction tool before the unsharp mask. When using the unsharp mask, Take care to avoid over sharpening. It is more prone to artifacts such as noise, halos, and jagged edges. Make sure to check the image at 100% zoom. Third, DxO recommends not to increase the sharpness of a shot that has already been sharpened by the camera, as in the case for JPEG images. If you intend to post process your image, you should shoot without in camera sharpening. So, those were the recommendations. Next, let's run through the slideshow comparison. So, I hope you enjoy the comparison. Which one gave the best results? Lens softness correction tool, unsharp mask, 
or both used together? Write it down in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. Personally, I do prefer using Dexo's recommendations of using both tools simultaneously. I found that it allowed me to sharpen aggressively while keeping the artifact slow, though each tool used in isolation also worked great. So I hope you found this video helpful. If you like this content, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share to help keep the videos coming. Until the next video, I'm going to see you in the next one. Bye for now.